Hey everybody, uh, we're going to be covering a question that you know one of our uh, viewers brought to our attention. Yes. So the question, Ron is going to tell you what that question is right now. <laughs> the question is, um, they ask, can um, I address uh, being sexy? Uh, um, I, the, the, the wife says, I have tried to be more modest. And I feel less, less sexy and don't really know how to balance this advice. Um, thank you. Hope all is well. Um, and then the other comments on this was another wife said, that's a great question for me. The opposite is true. Having grown up being taught to be modest mm -hmm. and I don't have a problem with that. I struggle when it is time to look and feel sexy. And then um, there's one more com comment that says, me too. I grew up incredibly modest and being sexy was frowned upon. So when I broke away from my upbringing, I went completely in the opposite direction. Now that I'm adult and realizing that modesty can be beautiful, I too have an issue now getting sexy, or at least what I think sexy is. Okay, so that's the uh, question uh, that we're gonna talk about today. Uh, so this is gonna be a, just a conversation that uh, my wife and I are gonna have. Now, if you have any questions like that that you would like for us to answer, and we can answer them, send it to info at the color of Yes. Info at the color of or you can also send it to Joe Robinson at the color of marriage.com as well. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started um, with answering the question at hand. So um, let's look at things from a biblical perspective first. Um, so I pulled up some stuff. Some scriptures, um, I think some of the very first scriptures that um, everyone always goes to is Timothy and what he says about um, modesty and uh, where is it? it's first Timothy chapter two, verse nine. that says, I always want the women to dress modestly with decency and propriety, adorning themselves, um, not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes. So what do you think Timothy is saying there? Is it obvious <laughs> what he's saying? Well, it's obvious and not so obvious. Uh, I think one thing that we as Christians don't realize is that Paul, uh, he wasn't talking directly to us. He was talking directly to the audience. So what goes without being said in this particular passage of Scripture that will help us to understand it a whole lot better? So what goes on with, with without being said is that how the women were dressing in that time and why they were dressing that way. Okay. They were dressing that way because of the culture of that time presented themselves in this way. They wanted to emulate the culture and Paul did not want them to emulate the culture anymore. Yeah. I, I think they were um, a lot of, and this is the same thing that's going on today. Exactly. They, they were coming out of, um, Worshiping in the different temples and stuff that they had of mm -hmm. all the different gods that are available. Now they were become they were they were accepting Christ um, as their Lord um, and Savior, but they still were still dressing like the culture, still even acting like the culture. So this was all a process of them still learning and growing um, in, in the Lord. Yeah, exactly. And this is a process for us today to mm -hmm. to learn in the Lord. And some of us still have culture what we learned as we were growing up stuck in us. And that's why um, when you think about, um, when I think about the term sexy, the first thing I think about is spell out the word sexy. What is the root word of sexy? Sex. And, um, and, the, and I think about, especially as being a woman that loves the Lord, a Christian woman, um, and then a wife, mm -hmm. the only person that I should be thinking about sex with is my husband. And if I'm a single Christian yes. woman, I should, um, uh, the only sex that I should be thinking about is the fact that my sex is a female. Not to say that I don't um, have those, you know, desires maybe to want to be intimate with someone. But my my husband and my first love um, should be um, toward honoring and reverencing God. Just as the married Christian woman's first love should be to um, reverencing God and how she conducts herself. So, mm -hmm. and honestly, I don't believe... Um, I know the word sexy, of course, is not in the Bible. And to me, it's just, it's another one of those worldly, uh, it's the worldly terminology. Right. It's a worldly term terminology that the enemy wants women to use, and, and, and men as well, mm -hmm. to describe 
how they feel and how they look. Yes, and it's look. I think that's the whole thing. Sexy is all about look. <laughs> but it's also feel because it the way we look brings about a feeling yes. as well. Yes. And is that feeling and look biblical? Yes, and and that's the thing when you think about the word um, sexy. Like I said, I mean, what do you what do you envision? Are you envisioning um, the the mature love uh, between a husband and wife, or are you envisioning uh, some a, a worldly woman that's in a low cut uh, dress or blouse, something skin tight, um, and it could it, it just I mean showing their curves, looking looking as they say seductive, like I want mm -hmm. you, I want somebody to look at me. Um, when I think of sexy, and I think about before I was married to you, Joe, and Mm -hmm. I was in the world trying to catch, as they say. Uh, right. I would d intentionally put on certain items because I wanted people to notice me. I wanted men to find me attractive and desire me. And so I would go yes. in my closet and I'd be like, ooh, that looks cute. You know, ooh, I look so cute in this. Ooh, I want to put wow. this on. And yes. um, and you think about how cute you would look wearing it. And um, and you think about, and even when you're wearing it, you, you got to maybe a little extra switch uh, sway because <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm so cute, you know, um, and, and you see, and you kind of glance to see if folks is watching you, you know, like, mm -hmm. and you're thinking to yourself, oh, they, they see me in my outfit. I look good. My bo my booty look good in this. I know you shouldn't be saying the word, but hey. It's the word. <laughs> I mean, but, but that's the truth. That's what people are thinking. Yes. But the only problem is women, you don't realize that's what the men are thinking. They're not thinking it in yes. in the way that you are thinking it in a, in a innocent way. They're thinking it in a sexual way. And yes. the way you catch someone, the way uh -huh. someone catches you is the way they see you from the duration of how they caught you. You know, that is so key because in my mind, I'm thinking I'm looking cute. Yeah, it's nice to get the attention and folks to say, oh, that looks so nice on you. You look so mm -hmm. cute, girl. Um, but I am not thinking about, I want to have sex with this guy. I want to have sex with that guy. I want to have, but when men look at a woman, uh, oft, sometimes, oftentimes, oftentimes, they are true. looking at them lustfully like, ooh, I wonder what she is like. I wonder if I could get that. I wonder if I could hit that. And that's sad because yeah. that's exactly what's going through men's mind. Mm -hmm. When I was out there, that's what was going through my mind. If I seen a woman dressed seductively and she may have been classy seductive, but yeah, yet. There could be some classy because they. Exactly. Yeah. And, and the thing about it is she's easy. Ooh, that's ooh. that's what you think of. You think of she's she's easy, and you may not be easy, but you make yourself look easy. So so listen, <laughs> listen, sexy. All right, sexy. Um, let, let's talk about the word sexy. Sexy. What what does that what does it even mean? Google sexy. They're gonna try to fool you to make it think. To, they're gonna try to fool you with their definitions to make it seem like it's something good. But really, truthfully, look at the word sex e. Sex e that means you're looking like sex. Well, in the dictionary online it says sexually attractive are exciting, and then it says sexy. The French it says underwear. Um, it says seductive. These are the similar words: desirable, alluring. Um, all of these words: um, sensual, tempting, tantalizing, um, hot, bettable. Oh wow! Come hither, hither. I mean, <laughs> foxy, cute, bootylicious. Wow. Um, excite, stimulating, suggestive, raunchy, risky, provocative, spicy. And, and um, here's the thing. Do you want people to be thinking about you when you dress sexy? Do you want those terms? Now, I know probably some people might say, yes, that's what you, you want your husband to be thinking about you like that. You want your wife to be thinking about that. But what does the Bible say about those terms? That's what we want to do. We want to we don't want to we want to know what the what the word of God has to say about these terms, what the Bible says about sexy, about us being sexy. Mm -hmm. See, let me say this real quick. Sexy, most women, when they say, I want to feel sexy, I want to feel good about myself. Yeah. That's really what you're saying. I want to feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. And the world has fooled you to believe mm -hmm. that when you dress provocatively, and you may not think it's provocatively, but yeah. when you let a little cleavage show, uh, you let your belly show, you uh, let a lot of legs show. Are your, are your arms and your back, it's, it's so, yeah, it's it, alluring. It, it's it's sexy. It's 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 uh it's cute, like I said. Um, you know, I, it makes me think about, I used to think I could not work out, and this may be crazy to y'all, but I used to think I couldn't go work out, even in the privacy of my home, without putting on the little spandex, 
uh, top and the the what they call them leggings. I yeah. was like, oh, I gotta have Yoga that because that, that was my motivation to be cute. And when I'm working out, because everybody else they 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 seem to be cute when they're working out, and, yeah. and that just was my motivation that I gotta get these abs tight and I gotta look cute in this suit. I gotta be, and that was, but that was before, of course, I met you. <laughs> Um, but that was my thinking. That was my thinking. And I thought it was innocent. But that's a lot of people's thinking um, today because the world will fool you to think that this is what you have to do. So, so ladies, let me say something. We're going to go over some scriptures here. But ladies, let me say something. Men as well, but, but mostly to the ladies. What do you want men to be thinking about you mm-hmm. when, when, you're, when you're in your outfit? Do you want them to think that you are a wife or someone they want to go to bed with? Mm. Okay, because they're thinking one or the other. Yeah. I, I guarantee you, they're thinking one or the other. The man that's out there that's actually looking for a wife, he's looking for someone who's going to be the godly woman that's in the Bible, that's described in the Bible. And mm-hmm. if he's not fooled, he's not looking for a woman who's dressed seductively. Now, some men would say, you know what? I don't care if some man, other man's looking at my wife and... um because yeah. I'm, my, my husband likes it, so I wear it. Right. And the, and the guy says, you know what? I'm strong because she's going home with me. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the truth. But the problem with that is you're tempting and setting somebody else up for failure. And God tells us, find, you know, the scripture that talks about, he says, don't become a stumbling block to other people. Oh, I ain't even got that one. You but know, I got these other ones. <laughs> yeah. But God tells us not to be a stumbling block to other, other people. And you say, it's not my responsibility. He needs to be thinking about. What he's supposed to be, keep his eyes to himself. And that's the truth. He should keep his eyes to himself, but you make it pretty darn hard for him to do that. Yep. Um, it is, it says, therefore, this is Romans 14 verses 13 and through 23. Um, therefore, let us not well, pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother. Um, that is verse 13. Um, I also want to, talk about the fact that 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20 says that you are not your own for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Um, and you know, that, that, that's the other thing I want to talk about. You know, we're supposed to be glorifying God in our body, not, um, in glorifying ourselves. And that's part of what we've been talking about. Is there another verse about the stumbling block? Yeah. So there is another verse on the stumbling block. Um, and if you go to gotquestions.org, uh, I, I like going to gotquestions.org. Uh, it, uh, it has never failed me yet when it comes to finding scriptures on what I'm doing Bible study on and understanding things of the Bible. So I'm going to read a little bit about what they have. It says, what does it mean to be a stumbling block to somebody, somebody, someone else? In the midst of a series of laws uh, regulating the treatment of others, we find do not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block in front of the blind. Uh, but fear your God, I am the Lord. So a stumbling block is something that you put up, put in front of somebody mm-hmm. to cause them to fall, to stumble, to stumble. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, and, and so you, you are causing someone else to fall or stumble and, and become weak when you present this temptation before them. And you don't, you, you really don't know, you know, who you're affecting when you, are dressed like that, showing some of the body parts that should only be kept to your husband or to your wife. You don't want to. You don't want to do that. Um, so I, I want to look at um. And 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 I want to look at a few other things. A couple other passages of scripture. One other passage of scripture uh, that talks about this. Um, so First Corinthians uh, eight nine, and then we're going to move on. But but take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. Mm -hmm. You have the right to dress however you want to dress. You sure do. All right. And we're not trying to tell you what to do, what not to do. But God says, don't let your right become someone else's stumbling block. Mm -hmm. So you have a responsibility as a believer Mm -hmm. to not cause somebody else to fall because of what your, what your freedom, your so-called freedom is. So sexy. Think about the word again. Spell it like Rhonda said, S. E X Y S E X Y. What do you hear there? When you when you with sex E, I am all about sex yes. in how I feel and how I'm dressed. Think about that. Is that biblical? And the other another verse um, talking about the body is First Corinthians six 
verses 19 through 20 that says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. Once again, you are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Honor God with your bodies. I have to I say it again. Um, Romans, uh, well, Philippians 2, 3 says, Do nothing um, from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others. Are more significant than yourselves. If your spouse has a problem with you dressing as you as he may say is sexy out for the world when you're going out the house, then there, there's a, there's a problem there. Are you doing this out of out of your own selfish vanity? Um, are you dressing in a way that glorifies God and your temple? Um, are you counting your husband um, more significant than yourself? Or even uh, sometimes what husbands can go out trying to be sexy too, right? Yeah, they have the top two buttons. <laughs> Um, unbuttoning. Got the hair showing. Yeah, got the hair showing. Wearing the muscle shirt and there you, stuff. There you, you go. I mean, you you explaining it. You you're explaining <laughs> it right. I mean, it's it's the same thing. And and the thing is, let's talk about what can we do to get a feeling, the feeling that we desire to have, that we say we want when we say sexy. See, there's a feeling that you're after when you say I want to be sexy. You want to be accepted. Yeah. And, you know, um, us as Christian women, a lot of us, we struggle with with um, our self-worth. We struggle with what beauty uh, really looks like. Um, we struggle with a, a lot of things that really, if you be honest, earnest and look at it, it's rooted in culture. It's rooted in worldly thinking. It's rooted in what we believe is a beauty standard, what we believe um, is a norm. I'm not saying that you can't be, um, of course you can be beautiful yes. and you can wear beautiful clothes and be adorned, uh, beautifully, um, for your husband in the church and in, in the world. But it's, it's a matter of, of, of being modest, um, with that, not, uh, when you checking yourself before you, uh, leave the mirror. Cause there's been plenty of times I go in front of the mirror and I know, and I see myself, and stuff is a little tighter than I want it, but I'll be like, eh, I'm okay. I, I compare that tightness to, you know, somebody else's tightness that may have a hot, lot more tightness in their clothes. And I say, I'm, I'm good with this. Mm -hmm. I'm acceptable. But the Holy Spirit immediately tells me when I'm looking at myself or when I'm putting it on, you know, that's too tight for you. You know, that's too small. Right. You know, that is, that, that's not iron, but I, but yes. I justify it. Mm hmm. But you know, it wouldn't be anything wrong with women wearing tight clothes or, or or revealing clothes. It wouldn't be anything wrong with you doing that if it didn't have a negative effect on those that are around you. See, those revealing clothes, those tight clothes, those sexy wear, that's for your husband. That's for your wife. You, you're supposed to be appealing to one another. See, the problem is too many women, they're, they're, they're trying to catch Somebody in looking sexy, and then when they get married, <laughs> they stop doing it. <laughs> I think that, and that, I think that's part of what you know. Um, the question was for today. I think some of the women are trying to now; they're no longer living that life, mm -hmm. um, and they're no longer in that space, and they're trying to um, make sure that they are still desirable for their husband. And um, I guess using the word "sexy" uh, yeah. for their husband. I think um, it was like last year when you said something to me about. I'm not sure what word you use, but I think you wasn't pleased with maybe how I was coming to bed at night. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you've never said anything before. And he was like, I didn't have to before. And I noticed that. And when I reflected back, I was like, yeah, I had become lax in um, getting just tired and just falling asleep in my clothes sometimes. And yeah. um, I either when I did, you know, get ready for bed or whatever, I was still all bundled up. Instead of thinking about, you know, I want it to be desirable to you. And, and I'm going to come back to what she says, what she just said. But also, I want to go back to First Corinthians. I want to go to First Corinthians seven five, where it says to 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 combat sexual immorality. Paul tells the man and the woman get married. Yes. So in order to stop inappropriate sex from going on. God said to get married. Now, I ain't telling you to go out and just find somebody and get married. You better make sure you're getting married to the right person. If you're listening to this, um, you know, this video and you're not married, but you, you, you find the right person. But sex is only for marriage. So therefore, to stop sexual immorality, God says to get married. So I say this because when you stop being 
the the, the sexually, uh, you, when you stop being a the way that attracts your husband or wife sexually, you're actually not doing what scriptures tell you to do. You, you're actually allowing your husband or your wife to have eyes to look other way, other way, and, and instead of looking at you. Be sexy for your husband, your wife, and, and let's you know. I, I want to use another word. Be appealing. Yes. That's the word for I believe a Christian wife or husband be appealing the same I mean the same appealing that you were when you met them there was there was a reason you caught their um their eye or whatever you had you know there was there was there was the outer but then there was also the inner as mm -hmm. well that was appealing to them that they wanted to spend the rest of their life with. Amen. Um, Amen and so we're gonna look uh, at some some scriptures here and also i want to read the first corinthians chapter seven that you said yeah go ahead um, number verse five it says um well let's start at verse three it says well verse two but since sexual immorality is occurring each man should have sexual relations with his own wife and each woman with her own husband the husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife and likewise the wife to her husband the wife does not have authority over her own body but yields it to her husband. In the same mm -hmm. way, the husband does not have authority over his body, but yields it to his wife. In verse five, do not deprive each other except perhaps by mutual consent and for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer. Then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Amen. That's exactly what I'm talking about, folks. Um, talk to a, a couple. We talked to a couple uh, some time ago and we said what needs to happen for sex to take place between two people and there's only three things that need to happen attraction cooperation and participation hmm. so when you are sexy the the attraction place the, the attraction part is taking place yes. okay now now if you are attracted to the other person then the next thing happens if you allow it that is to cooperation and then of course then y'all participating in sex this should only happen between husbands and wives so i understand you want to have this feeling of being accepted this feeling of being attractive but you have to see what being appealing and attractive looks like for a godly person yeah not a worldly person because we can't get our definitions from the world yes we got to get our definition from god get our definitions from god mm -hmm. god wants us to have a sequence of living that's in accordance with his word not in accordance with what the world or culture has to say yes. so just because you feel like you have to do something remember your flesh your carnal mind desires to do things against god's will because everybody said if i feel like doing it it must be right no it's not because sometimes you feel like killing people sometimes you feel like hitting people sometimes you feel like doing a lot of things does that make it right no you will go to jail if you do some of those things and, and i just want you to understand that jesus standard of holiness is not was not just physical it was mental what we're thinking about so we have to, this is why God tells us to take thoughts captive and stuff. Like you said, sometimes you feel like, and you think, um, you're thinking things that are not holy, thinking things that are not godly. And you think those things about one another. And so we have to be mindful of our thought life. Cause that's what rules us, especially when we are, when we're, when we're wearing certain things, you know, like I said, I was thinking to myself, I, matter of fact, it was kind of like a, my own little fantasy when I when before I met you, and I'll be walking around. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm so cute. I wonder if he's looking at me. Oh, I wonder if they think my my outfit look good. Oh, I just I mean, I would have these thoughts randomly, and I would see myself. Oh, I'm looking good standing here. These are the thoughts that was going through my mind. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna stand like this to look better, like make make me look a little thinner, whatever. I mean, these are these are the thoughts. And if these thoughts are running through your mind, and also if you're wearing clothes that you got to constantly tug and pull on. In order Amen. to keep to feel like you are, 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 are over over exposing yourself. Yes, if you're constantly having to pull it up or pull it together or pull it down, do you have to wonder? Do you really need to be in that? Amen. And look, folks, we're not here to <laughs> judge anybody. We're not judging you. We're trying to help you be successful in your Christian walk. We want you to be holy. We want you to be set apart for God's yes. use. And, and the thing about it is, when someone looks at you with uh, in attire that you may call sexy are they thinking holy 
or are they thinking worldly? Mm -hmm. What are they thinking about you when they see the way that you dress? Are they thinking godly or are they thinking worldly? You have to ask yourself that. I'm not trying to put anybody down, but the last thing is I want to read what my wife had, had on here in, in, in about the word sexy. He says the word, word sexy can mean that people, objects, or situations are perceived as sexually appealing, desirable, or arousing. When you use, when, when used to describe a book or a movie, the word sexy means that the story is sexually stimulating in a way. The term sexy can also mean that an object or item is considered to be particularly appealing or attractive. So we got to be careful about the terms that we use. Mm -hmm. Find a better term for that word sexy because you as a Christian woman or a Christian man, you don't want to be looking sexy for anybody except for your husband or wife because otherwise... And, and, and also in the bedroom. Yes, in the bedroom. Because everybody don't need you to see right. you looking sexy. That's the whole point of this. Everybody do not need to see you looking sexy. Only your spouse. Remember, it's sex. Are you trying to sex other people? Are wow. you wanting other people to desire you? Um, so what, what is your thought process in trying to look vivacious and, and vulnerable and delicious? And what is, <laughs> what, what is your thought process? I'm hey, serious. I, I know you are. I mean, but that is the truth. Wow. <laughs> and, and see, do, let's think about these things. And so if you want to balance, the thing about it is take away the word sexy and only refer to sexy as w between you and your spouse in the bedroom okay not on the outside now if you want to look like you are attractive or whatever then ask yourself why do i want to look attractive who who am i trying to look attractive for i'm married why am i trying to catch somebody else why am i trying to catch other people's attention yes you got to ask yourself that Okay. Not that you are not supposed to, your temple is not supposed to be beautiful. Exactly. Not saying that. But if you are putting on something because you want to be desirable to, to the outside public and you want them to say, look at me, you know, uh, uh, come follow me, come and see me, then you have to really wonder about your heart. Is this to glorify God or to glorify you? you exactly. And that's the next thing I want to say is you want to dress in a way that represents Jesus. Mm -hmm. Shirt, tie, suit, uh, a nice you know, dress, skirt, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, that looks good. I'm not saying dress like a nun. No, we're not, not. <laughs> we're not talking about dressing with skirts all the way down to your ankles and a veil all the way down. No, uh, coverings. We're, we're not saying that. We're not saying that. But we are saying dress responsible. Yes. And here's what I should tell my wife. I said, baby, you're not dressing responsibly. Yes, because y'all, sister still struggle at times. Some stuff be tight. And <laughs> I be trying to get away with it. And the Holy Spirit be like, nope. And my husband catch me before I get out the bedroom, though. Yeah, that's, but, that's what he said. Dress responsibly, baby. Yeah, she said, I, I tell her, I said, you look very delicious in those jeans that you have right on. <laughs> but I don't want anybody else to be seeing you looking delicious in those jeans. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I and I used to get so frustrated with him because I was I tell him, you know, this these hips, this is what I was, you know, what I've always had. And it's hard for me to find things that are not so uh, that not curvature on me. But uh, that's not an excuse. God right. kept telling me that that's not an excuse. There's other clothing that you can wear. You don't have to, to wear that. Why are you wearing that? Find something that appeals to you and your husband that looks modern, that's acceptable, mm -hmm. that you can wear other than what the world is pushing towards you. And that's the key, the world. The yeah. world. And even in the church, they're saying, oh, it's okay to wear stretch pants on the, ooh, that's a whole nother thing. On, in the pool, my pool people, but on stage, it's okay to wear these little short mini skirts that show our tattoos of scriptures on our legs and on our backs and arms. It's okay. I don't believe it's okay in God's economy. Yes, because, I mean, when I have my young sons coming up to me, more telling me verbatim what about these short skirts and stuff, young sons, do you understand? Elementary son, grade son, coming and telling me what they teacher was wearing and, and I look and I say Lord have mercy she got this high high skirt on but she got a scripture on her leg that she wanted everybody to see but the problem is the young boys the young men and some of the older men want to see what's attached to that scripture yes and, 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 and believe me what's attached to that scripture should only be seen by your husband and nobody else or you mm -hmm. in the mirror you know what I'm saying so listen as we end um, today I wish we had more time I want to say this, um, you know, ask God, 
how to help you with the feelings that you have so that he can point you in the direction of a passage of scripture or passage that can help you feel the way that you want to feel or stop feeling the way you think you should be feeling. Because yes. sometimes we think we're supposed to be feeling a certain way because the world tells us we're supposed to be feeling this way. And yes. God has something totally different, different. for yes. you. As a woman who desires to honor the Lord with her body, would dress and conduct herself to bring honor to her husband and to the Lord. All right, y'all. That's our time. Y'all take care. Have a good rest of the day. Be safe and do what God tells you. Keep this in mind and watch the transformation unfold. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this. Also, if you agree with this message and feel others should hear it, please share and like it.